Hey guys, Paul from Passion Consulting here. So before I get into Scrum Artifacts, um, a small, small issue. Those of you that have read my books will notice that I spell artifacts with an E instead of an I, and I spell organization with an S instead of a Z. So it's just to let you know, yes, I can spell. I'm just from the UK. Okay, so if any of you have read my books and you're wondering why, I spell artifacts with an E and organization with an S. There's a good reason. I can spell, I assure you. It is spell checked, but it's, it's spell checked with a UK spell check. So try and find it in your heart to forgive me, okay? Okay. All right, Scrum Artifacts. Scrum Artifacts, um, I have highlighted here the definition. They represent work or value to provide transparency and opportunities for inspection and adaptation. Artifacts defined by Scrum are specifically designed to maximize transparency of key information so that everybody has the same understanding of the artifact. So there's quite a lot in that, but essentially what, what they're drawing out in this version of the Scrum Guide especially is the fact that for all of the artifacts that Ted spoke about in the video, uh, the key thing here is being transparent, being honest to everyone about the state of the project, the product backlog, the sprint backlog and, and the final increment, uh, which I'm, I'm about to talk about again, uh, are all are all uh, particular objects that serve a purpose. But not only do they serve a purpose, they also give a strong, a strong indicator for the team about where they are at in terms of progress. And in Scrum, one of the things in Scrum is being really transparent about how you're getting on. Because one of the failings of projects in the past is that one person who may or may not have the confidence to convey the information or may or may not have the, the right tools to convey the information. But with Scrum, what we've got are three objects, three artifacts that can be used to convey information about the project. And as long as everybody's transparent about what, what they're being what, what that information's saying, then the project's always the, the stakeholders always well informed and everybody knows where, where they're at. But as soon as that transparency goes that's when issues start to arise. That's when you really don't know how new you are to the deadline. So that's why it's very important to make sure that with all of these artifacts we're about to go through, that transparency is key and being honest about when something's done, being honest about what's, what's in the backlogs uh, and, and conveying that information regularly uh, needs to take place to, for, you, for us to be doing Scrum the right way. Okay, so the product backlog. So what I've highlighted here is the product owner is responsible for the backlog, including content, availability, and ordering. Uh, I think we did that earlier, so I'm not going to linger too long on that point. Product backlog refinement is the act of adding detail estimates and order to items in the product backlog. I think I mentioned product backlog grooming earlier. Now, in, in this version of the Scrum Guide, the latest version, uh, Ken and Jeff have gone out of their way to, to get rid of the term grooming and use the word refinement. So you're actually refining the backlog along the way. And this is something that takes place uh, during, during the kind of daily life of a product owner and team. They work together to refine the backlog. And it can be on a completely ad hoc basis where the, the product owner needs to speak to the team. But I found that the best way to do it is to actually organize a meeting. And this is where I was saying that Scrum you know, tries really hard to give you all the meetings or the minimum set of meetings you need to, to run a project effectively. And it works pretty well. But I have found that a few well-placed key meetings, this is just my opinion, really work to get this done. Because everybody can manage their time. They know they're in the same place at the same time. And they can get this done. So product backlog refinement is essentially, um, it, definitely in the way that I do it, it it's, it's a meeting. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be done only in this meeting, but I conduct it often once a sprint in a meeting of an hour where the product owner goes through uh, the top priority items in the backlog that the team hasn't seen yet, which are essentially cards, story, user stories, uh, features in, in, a, in, in terms of a user story. So... They're focused on how they benefit the user. And one by one, the product owner discusses with the team what the story is, uh, the acceptance criteria, so how they will, how from his perspective he will know when it's done. And the team will basically discuss that. 
with the product owner if it's a, a big feature that it couldn't be done in a sprint. Uh, get, get an estimate which is going to be helpful for the business to know how long it's going to take uh, or to get an idea of how long it's going to take. And it also gives an understanding of what's coming up so that when you finally get to planning, you are armed with all of the information. You, the team are already armed with the information about what it is they're building. It doesn't come as a surprise to them. But the key thing about refining the backlog is making sure that the items are ready for planning. This is, a, this is a very, very key thing. Making sure that before you even go into planning, the features that come in are ready. And ready means that they're, they're broken down to a size that the team could complete it and get it completely done by their definition within one sprint. So that's why I've, I've highlight, highlighted that because I think there's a lot in it. Um, and it's something that should it come up in in one of the certification exams, it's really key that you understand that concept in depth. Uh, you can get more information uh, in my blog, which I will be giving a link to at the end, at the end of this course. Ordered, higher ordered product backlog items are usually clearer and more detailed than lower ordered ones. So as, as, as we said in the training video, you would usually organize a backlog so that the higher order stuff, the highest priority stuff, is the stuff that the team is about to work on. And what happens is, through this process of refinement and discussing with the team what they're about to work on, you're actually making those items clearer. Sometimes you're breaking down a larger item into two, maybe three or four different features because they're too complex, or four different stories because they're too complex uh, in as one single one. Sometimes you're just clarifying the acceptance criteria or cl clarifying the title of the story or clarifying any detail so that when they come to it, they'll understand what it is they're doing. But by nature of refinement, you're actually making these higher priority items really clear. So highlighted that because, again, something that could come up in an exam and also something that we really encounter often uh, in the workplace using Scrum. Product backlog items that will occupy the development team for the upcoming sprint are refined so that any one item can re reasonably be done within the sprint time. And that's something I just went through. Product backlog items that can be done by the development team within one sprint are deemed ready for selection for in ready for selection in a sprint planning. So that term ready is a key term that has been brought in in the Scrum Guide, done and ready. So items, product backlog items, which are, can be referred to as stories or features, uh, are said to be ready when they're clear enough to be done in a sprint. And they're said to be done when the team has actually built those, those items as features at the end of the sprint and delivered them and have delivered them to a satisfactory condition that it meets their definition of done. Now, as part of the product backlog, uh, what you usually have that goes along with it, and I've, I've drawn attention to a release burn down specifically, but you must have some means, it doesn't have to be a burn down, of monitoring progress towards your goal. And this, this part I've highlighted here says that the product owner compares this amount with the work remaining at previous sprint reviews to assess progress towards completing projected work by the desired time for the goal. This information is made transparent to all stakeholders. So where in the video I drew, drew, drew attention to a release burn down, the release burn down is a means of a product owner being able to do this. And what's really key is the fact that the product owner is called out here as somebody that does this. And it's really showing that a product owner should be taking interest in measuring how near uh, the Scrum team are to to getting to that goal of getting a set of increments that the business or the product owner is happy to release. So the burn down is one way of doing that. I explicitly called out the release burn down, but this is just to say that's not the only way to do it. As long as it's being done, as long as you have a mechanism to do that, then you're on the right track. And this is just reiterating exactly what I've said, which is that various project practices upon trending 
have been used to forecast progress, like burn downs, burn ups, or cumulative flows. So a burn up is, for example, it, it, it shows how much progress you're making. Instead of burning down, so you start off with an amount of work and you steadily burn down that work by getting it done and crossing it off the list, a burn up just shows it the other way around. So it accumulates and shows how much work you've done. Sprint backlog. So the definition of the sprint backlog is the set of product backlog items selected for the sprint plus a plan for delivering the product incre increment and realizing the sprint goal. So in the video you'd have seen that the sprint backlog is the set of all the items or features or stories plus the tasks. The tasks are actually an example of a plan for delivering the product increment. And usually you would have these in a paper form to begin with or maybe in a tool by actually writing out each and every story and the team would break it into tasks and the tasks and the items together form the plan. But this is just re reiterating that. Only the development team, bump this up a little bit, only the development team can change its sprint backlog during a sprint. So what that means is, I mean, once you've started, actually started a sprint and started developing, the development team, the development team are now in full sw swing and any change to that could affect their progress. And once they've focused on a specific set of items, it's only right that they have the say-so about whether those items change. Otherwise, it makes the, the plan void. Now, it's not that the plan shouldn't update. Uh, it's very well known that in a sprint, things can change. But it's just making it clear here that it's up to the development team to actually negotiate really with, with the product owner and, and work together as a team with the product owner, but they have the final say in whether the items can change in the sprint. Monitoring sprint progress. So this is, we, we really don't go, need to go into too much detail about this. This is, when I, when I describe the sprint burn down, that is a means of monitoring sprint progress. But the key thing here is that the sprint burn down is not the only way to do that. It's just a very well-known, and from my experience, the best, well, most well-known way of monitoring sprint progress. All of these things, by the way, are things to really understand for the, for the certification, really understand that the burn-down isn't the only way, because through working in industry, sometimes you really get this sense that the burn-down is the only way to monitor progress, and Scrum doesn't tell you that, so that's definitely not the way, the only way. The increment, so I've been talking about the increment of a shippable product. In the new Scrum Guide, in this version of the Scrum Guide, it's called specifically just increment, and it's actually a releasable product as opposed to shippable. The new time is releasable. And at the end of the sprint, the new increment must be done, which means it must be in a usable condition that meets the Scrum team's definition of done. So this is just to, to really highlight again this concept of done, which you keep seeing popping up. 